Episode two, part two of my Makeup Artist Essentials kit series is going to be tools. Arr, arr, arr. That was that was a tool time reference, but anyways. So moving on, going on with what I mentioned in the first video, which was about skincare. I'm going to be recommending things in general. They don't have to be the same brand. They don't have to be the same price range even. These are just baseline items. These are just basic recommendations, basic items that you can start with, and you can change this up to whatever budget you're working on or whatever brands are accessible to you. Number one would be this guy. This is one of my brush canisters. Tools, brushes, very important guys. Very, very important. Very expensive investment. Probably one of the most expensive things you're going to be supplying your makeup kit with. I like to keep mine in a canister. This is a Cosette vessel. It is basically indestructible. You unscrew it. And then you have two cups. You can either separate your brushes into two cups so that you have a little bit more wiggle room, or what I like to do is I like to keep one cup open so I can put my dirty brushes as I work into there. So that when my job is over, I pull the dirty brushes from this can, pop them in a Ziploc bag so I can wash at home, and then I keep my clean brushes separate. I will have a video going in depth on brushes. Don't you worry, I'm working on it. But keep in mind when you're stocking your kit with brushes, you need brushes for all different eye shapes, eye sizes, product, different techniques. Whether you're working with liquids, with creams, with powders, with loose pigments, with glitters, maybe even applying glues. Have a variety of brushes in your kit because your tools make your job easier. Kits are built over years and years and years, so don't be discouraged if you start off and you don't have all the things that you want right off the bat. Take care of your tools, you guys. Quick brush tip if you are traveling, don't risk losing your brushes. They're expensive and you need them. Keep them with you at all times. Carry on friendly brushes are. Number two would be your stainless steel item. Stainless steel because you can sanitize it, you can clean it, and because it's durable. Makeup Artist Dynamic Duo, a palette knife and a palette. This is a bowl type palette and this is just a traditional palette knife. These can be found in specialty shops, in makeup artist shops, also Amazon. Amazon has an abundance of all things you need. They also have flat stainless steel plates, ones that have holes that you can put your thumb in, ones that have divots, and there are plastic options as well. Also, scissors. Scissors are very important for cutting those lashes or for cutting anything that might pop up during the day. Not stainless steel exactly, but tweezers. Tweezers are good to have, they are an essential. You need them for your lashes, you need them to hold things, tiny little things. Yes, like lash bands, but also maybe rhinestones or stencils. Also, if you need to, you know, get rid of a couple hairs here and there, you can do that. If you are going to do that, keep in mind the skin might get red and inflamed. If you're going to do it, do it early on. Not stainless steel, also very important, is a pencil sharpener for your pencils to keep them sharpened. Next up. We have lash curlers. Lash curlers are very important. They have a lot of different sizes. There's some that come like in half sizes where they're teeny tiny little guys. And this one is one of my favorites. It's from the Surat line, Troy Surat. You can find it online and in Sephora. This is worth the expense, guys. It is worth the money. It is the best lash curler that I've used. I love it. Moving on to hygiene, it is so important that as makeup artists, we are aware of what we are doing. We are working on the eyes, on the nose, on the mouth, all areas that could potentially have harmful bacteria that goes from our client to our kit and on to the next client. So in order to keep your kit clean, you're going to need some essentials. Number one is your disposables. Disposables are your one-time use products. So you use them on a client and then you toss them away. If you're not big on plastic, there's other options that have bamboo handles and whatnot. But these are three guys that I can show you now. We've got a pink one, a blue one, and a black one. There are silicone tips, there are round tips, there are short tips, there are flexible tips. There's all kinds of Spoolies, available to you. There's no excuse. Please do not apply mascara straight from the wand onto your client's eye, back in the tube and onto the next client because if there is any trace of an infection of pink eye, of anything, your product is now contaminated and not only have you ruined your product, you're also putting the next person 
every single other person that you're going to use that product with at risk of an eye infection, which isn't cool. Also, we have these guys. These are disposable liner applicators. We have disposable lip applicators. Fresh doe foot applicators ready for use. Also, we have sponges. You guys have seen this before? This, this was what we had before the beauty blender. Keep in mind, you might want to carry latex free options in your kit for those who might be allergic and not very commonly used puffs. This is an individually wrapped puff that I can use to powder somebody's face and really work that powder into the skin. These can also be washed, FYI. Also, Q-tips. Cotton buds, for those of you that don't like brand names, these are two options that I carry in my kit, but I carry a lot of different Q-tips. Cotton buds, I love them, I'm addicted. Next in hygiene, alcohol. This is an alcohol prep pad. This is individual use. I can use this to sanitize my tools and to sanitize a lipstick bullet, for example, if I applied directly to the lips, which I don't really do, but I could. Alcohol wipes are great. You can also get isopropyl alcohol in 99, 91, and 70%. I have seen 70 and 91 at like Target, Walmart, and stuff like that, but you can find 99 at specialty stores and online. You can pop them in a spray bottle and they're ready to go. The higher the alcohol content, the quicker it evaporates, and the lower the content, the longer it takes. So. Be careful when you're spraying the lower content alcohol on your powders. And hand sanitizer, also very important, shouldn't be missed. Make sure you clean your hands and make sure your client knows your hands are clean. So clean in front of them. Also in cleaning, this is basically a cotton square, cotton round. These are one time use to clean your client's face and then you toss it. As you can tell, I'm somewhat of a germaphobe, but I think it's better to err on the side of cleanliness because it's next to godliness. While you're working on your client, you might use the back of your hand as a palette, and that is fine. Just keep in mind that sometimes we forget that we have product on the back of our hand and it might end up everywhere. I know there's been once or twice where I have red or black stains down my fingers and then all of a sudden it's on the mascara wand that I grabbed and on this and on that. So it's good to have items around to keep clean as you work. I also recommend carrying baby wipes. These are my favorite. Makeup wipes are also another option if you don't want to carry just baby wipes. I carry makeup wipes as well, just in case, but sometimes makeup wipes can tend to be a little bit more irritating on the skin, so baby wipes are there for me to just make sure the back of my hands are clean, and when I'm working on a model's body, my hands can be cleansed on set, so I don't have to go to the restroom and then come back. Also good to have glue. Glue is an essential. There's latex-free options as well. Be sure to carry those because there might be somebody in your chair with latex allergy, but glue is also good for creative work if you're placing anything on the skin and getting artistic. And that's it, guys. That concludes tools, I think. But while you're at it, if you want to uh, slip some Listerine strips or some mints into your toolbox to make sure that your breath doesn't stink when you're working over somebody, that might be a good idea. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I hope this is useful to you. I kind of wish it was available to me when I started as a makeup artist. This is an accumulation of years of working and assisting, but if these videos can make it easier for you who's starting, that's what I'm making them for. Let me know what you guys think. The products that I just showed you and mentioned are going to be listed in the description box. And I want to see a comment or two. Tell me, what are you thinking? What else do you want to see? What do you want me to include in this series? I'm still working on that brush video. I'm not forgetting about that. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care. Bye.